Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would share some gel printing on some book pages. I have a few stencils. These are in my shop. These are August 2021 Artistic Stencil Club. I'm going to start with this one up here. I've got it laid out on a 12 by 12 gel plate. You can use any size gel plate if you like, and I thought I would just kind of mix some colors. I'm using some craft paint. I call it acrylic craft paint. A craft paint usually has more of a chalky look to it, where a heavy body acrylic paint, like this one, would be shiny. So I want to use this little bit of a, a chalky look. And I've got, looks like hyacinth. This was from Anita's. So really just any kind of paint that you like. Now you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice area that you don't have to worry about getting messy. I am a messy person. Not everybody is, but I am. All right, I've got a soft grayer, and I'm going to come in here and move this color around over the stencil. You don't need a whole lot of plate paint. You just want enough that it fills in that stencil. It's better to start with too little than to have too, too much, because then you have to try to get it off the plate. All right, once I've got the whole area covered the way that I want, I'm going to lift the stencil and then just let this air dry for a few minutes. It could be 30 seconds. It could be five minutes. It kind of depends upon how much paint you put down and your humidity. I do have a ceiling fan on, so that'll help dry this just a little bit quicker. So I'll be right back as soon as this is dry enough to put the next layer of paint. All right, it looks like it's pretty much dry. I don't know how long it really took, just a minute or so. And you can kind of tell if you put your finger on it and it doesn't come up with paint. And it's not shiny. When it's still wet, it still looks wet. It has that wet look to it. All right, so let's add a different color. I've got a teal here. I think this is called light turquoise. I'm going to make a couple different spots. Just kind of adding a tiny bit of paint. And then I've got a darker color, and this one's called uh, Island Blue. And I'm just slowly, smoothly braring over. And at the same time, you're doing it with a little bit of speed because the paint can dry on you quickly in some circumstances. And I've got a scrap paper over here to the side that I'm cleaning my brayer off. Now I'm using pages out of a large dictionary. I think the pages are a little over 12 inches, almost 13 inches. I guess it's 12 and a half. And then I've got some scraps that I'll use around the edges just to kind of clean up. And I like to rub the back of my paper with my hands. You can use your brayer if you want. It depends upon, you know, how messy you want to get. Or you may have a second brayer that's dry. But I like to just smooth my hands over the paper. And then I just slowly lift it back and we'll see what this print looks like. I like it. I like the color that it turned out to be and the pattern. So it may be kind of hard to see on camera, but it's quite pretty in person. So let's do some more. This is another stencil from the August Stencil Club. It's the one on the bottom. I think I called it Flowers and Circles. So this time, the flowers will be whatever color paint that I put in, and then the framework around it can be a different color. So let's do some pink flowers. So I've got hot pink here. I'm trying to use up some of my old paints that I've had for some time. So some of them may not come out very well and you just kind of have to play with it. I'm going to add a little bit of some ivory. That'll kind of soften this just a little bit. 
All right, so I'm going to lift the stencil again and then allow this to dry just for a moment. I didn't say this, but I have a bucket over here to the side. So I have a little tub that I put some water in and a little bit of thieves cleaner. You know, if you don't have thieves, you can use a mild uh, detergent in there. It'll help loosen up that paint because what I'll do is I'll soak these. And then when I'm done with my gel printing session, I'll take these to the sink and wash them out. All right, so I want to kind of show you what happens if you don't wait for the paint to dry all the way. So there's a few areas where it's still kind of wet. So I'm going to go ahead and work over it. And what it's going to do is it's going to smear and blur just a little bit. So I'm grabbing a really pale blue. I think this one is called Morning Blue. All right, so I've got the paint on there. So now we're going to put on a book page. And I'll use my scrappy pages to clean up the edges. So it still had some of the paint on the plate so I can get another ghost print, partial print. And then here's what the page looks like. So it's a little bit softer, but I still like the grunginess of it where it didn't quite get all of the paint. Isn't that kind of cool? This time I have the half sheet from the August Stencil Club and I'm placing it pretty close to where the other was. And this time I'm going to use some different colors. So I'm going to grab a little bit of some darker pink. This one's called Royal Fuchsia. I'm going to put it on this side just a little bit. And we'll do a little Royal Fuchsia over here. I'm going to grab a purple. So this one is purple. And let's grab this uh, island blue again. I'll just fill in the areas that I didn't already use paint. All right, we're going to lift the stencil again and let this dry and then I'll lift the print. I had to show you my page cleaning off my brayer. This is the page I made just by cleaning off my brayer. So it'll be fun to use to make a collage. All right, I think this paint is just about dry enough that I'm okay if it's a little bit of a blurred or muted effect around it. So I'm gonna use some cream or ivory colored paint this time. And I may need more. I think my that one's almost empty. I really like how this one turned out. Isn't that pretty? With that purple and pink and the teal in there. A little bit of that ivory. You can still see somewhat of the text behind it. So you know that it was a book page. All right, I'll set this aside to dry. Well, it's a new day and I let the gel prints dry and I cleaned off my desk of the gel plate and I have the gel prints here. So this is one of them on a book page, another as well. And then I had some others that I made earlier and I got those out. I've even got the page where I cleaned off my brayer and then some scraps from other mixed media projects. And I thought we would make a little, I don't know, I'll call it a folio. I was noticing that I'm using a book page that's really rather thin. And I think what I want to do to help sturdy it up, I don't want it to be cardstock weight, but I don't want it to be as flimsy as this. So I'm going to grab a plain book page. 
So I've got a book page that is the same size. It's from the same book, in fact, and I'm going to fold this in half and I will glue this together. I just want this to be a little bit thicker than just this really thin white paper. I'm just using Aline's Tacky Glue. Now, if you want to use cardstock, you can, or if you have thicker paper, you may not need to do this step. Now, I have a gel print where I was cleaning off my gel plate, so it just had a few specks, and I thought this would be interesting on the inside of the little folio, so I'm going to glue this down onto the top of this page that I just folded over and glued together. And I'm just using my bone folder, well that ripped, but I'm using my bone folder to smooth out the glue. I'm going to do it from the back side. So now I have one piece. I'll go ahead and trim off this excess because I don't need it. So my piece is approximately 4 inches by 12 inches and we're going to flip it over and work on the other side. So I have these gel prints and I thought what I would do is see which one I like the most. And I kind of like the way that one turned out. And I think I want to do the two different patterns. So I'm going to grab my ruler and just lay it where the divider is because this was a split stencil. It had two designs on one page. And I'm just going to hold down my ruler. It's got a metal edge. I'm going to rip it. You can use your paper cutter if you so choose. I think I want about, oh, let's do a, so I want to see the pattern. So about a three inch strip of this piece. This one, I think I want to do about, oh, probably a two inch strip. So I'm going to try her off this edge just a little bit. I'll come in just a little bit. So I have a, a scrap that, I can use somewhere else. So I'll just put this in my scrap bin, but this is what I want. It is from here to here, about two inches. And I'll just continue to grab some of these papers and tear them to the size that I want. All right, so I've grabbed a few pieces. I'm laying it out in what I think would be a pretty good design. What I'll do now is I want to add some distress inks around the edges, but I think I also want to take this page, which was just cleaning off my brayer, and it's just green ink on a book page. I think I want to stamp over the top of it to give it a pattern. I've got the Sketched Wildflowers rubber stamp, and I'm going to stamp it across going in different directions so you kind of get a different patterning. It's one of my favorite ways to work with pages like this because you can alter the look just by stamping over it. All right, so let's add some distress ink to the edges. Oh, I just re-inked my ink pad and it hasn't settled yet, so I got a lot of ink that time. All right, so I'm just going to kind of lay this out and layer these down, trying to make a little bit of a pattern out of what I like and how I want it to come together, because I want a mix of different patterns. And so I'm thinking about this. I may change this around to go this way. And then maybe these two go that way. So that when this flips over, it's kind of, this will be peeking out maybe. Maybe I'll go that way. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I changed my mind. You know, it's okay. We're artists. We can change our mind. I kind of lay it the paper down in the glue and then I'll pick it up and then move it over a little bit. It kind of helps it pick up glue to get on the edges. All right, I want this piece to only be so long so that this green is at the bottom. So I'm just going to take my ruler here, kind of come down a little bit, make sure I'm straight. You want to be straight. And then I want to glue this. I make this the same width, so or length. 
So I'm just going to trim it with my scissors real fast. All right. So now I'm going to put glue down. All right, I'll flip it over and then looking from the back side or inside, this is going to be, I'm going to trim off these pieces that are hanging off here. And I'll save these. We may use them here in just a minute. We may use them in a whole nother project altogether. I'll go around the edges one more time with the stress ink so I get all those edges that I cut off. All right. Now I want to add a little more definition in between each one. So I'm going to grab my stamp from Shabby Stitches. And we're going to stamp between each piece of paper segment here. You could also go to your sewing machine if you like to sew. To get this segment, since my stamp is longer than the piece of paper, I'm going to lay a piece of paper here to be a mask, and then I can stamp and it not go past. Isn't that clever? And then I'm just going to go around the outside edge. So there's my stamped piece. All right, so I'm looking at this and I think what I want is to have this fold up and this is gonna fold over because I like that green on the front. And I have an idea for a pocket from the inside. I was watching, let's see, Roxy Create. She had a Roxy's Challenge where she made a little folio type pocket holder that had ephemera in it. And I just wanted to do it, but maybe just a little bit different. So I have a piece of cardstock here and I've got some book pages and they are three and a quarter inches wide by three and a half to three and a quarter about. I'm not going to use the full height of this first piece in the front, but I wanted to start with that size. So what I'm going to do is look at this and I want this to come up high enough that it covers the front. So I'm just going to take this and fold it over and crease it. So basically when you open this up, it'll be like that. And then I want this piece to fold down with a little bit of a gap here at the top kind of like that. Now Roxy used a eyelet, punched a hole, and tied a string. I think I want to find a little embellishment that I can put on the front here. So I'm going to dig around for a moment. That's kind of cute. That's one of Norella Calico Collage's digital images. So I'm going to glue that down by putting glue just on the bottom, about the bottom third of this. And I want to make sure I've got it down far enough. And that'll make a nice closure. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And then I have these pieces of paper. So what I want to do is she had kind of like pockets that were accordion attached. So they, they expanded. So I'm going to go around the edges real fast with some Distress ink. I do plan to trim this, so I'm just basically getting as much as this distressed. So after I do some trimming, I may do some folding, I still have it all done. All right, so this piece is going to be adhered to the back, and I want it to have the full depth of the pocket because I plan to put some cards behind it. So I've got some strips, one inch strips of paper, and we're going to put strips on three sides 
I'll set this aside to dry. And the reason why I'm doing it now is because we're going to fold these strips in and you want the glue to be dry so they don't accidentally adhere themselves together. So I got one side, so I'm going to go up, do this side. I usually just kind of lay it in the glue and then slide it over and press it down. This works if your paper that you have isn't quite big enough to make an edge that you can score and then fold. It's a great way to use up junk mail pages or maybe, in my case, this is from an old manual. When I was an insurance agent, we had continuing education. So the manuals are out of date. There's not much other use for them, so I cut them up. All right, so we'll set that aside to dry for a moment. All right, for these pieces, I think what I want to do is I want to take this back portion and I'm going to fold over about a quarter of an inch. Just so it's a little bit stronger on that edge. I'm going to do that on each one of these. All right, so this front portion is a little bit taller than the one in the back and I'm trying to decide do I want to go ahead and fold it over or wait so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and fold it I probably could have gotten away with folding it at the exact same time so that would be the same size all right so I've Fold it in on both sides about a quarter of an inch and I'm applying a little bit of glue on each one to keep that little flap over. And all that's doing is just kind of making this thin paper a little bit stronger. I'll go ahead and hit that top edge real fast with some Distress Ink. I have this Find Your Wings little set of rubber stamps and there's a little label. So I'll take this little label and I've got a little scrap of craft colored cardstock and I'm going to stamp it out about three times and then I'll fussy cut these. I already have some fussy cut that I've gone ahead and added some distress inks. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to glue this down across the top here and kind of give it the look of a little file folder tab across the top there. Yep, that's what we're going to do. But before I do that, I want to decorate this front page. And you know what? I happen to have a piece of this book page left. So what if we were to glue that down on the front there? And I have one of Norella's images. And we put this above. Maybe we'll go the opposite direction switch sides. I've got a little word that says dream. In fact, I have another one of these labels. That might look kind of cute. I think I want it on this side. Okay, so I'm going to apply some distress inks. See, we use all of our scraps. And we're going to put it, let's put it right here. This is one of Norella's um, lady flowers and ladies, ladies and flowers. It's normally an artist trading card size, but I go into my printer settings and tell it to print on a smaller print. I guess it's called print the whole page as a five by seven and it shrinks it down. And this is gonna go right up here. So I think I'm gonna put it even with that green. So I'll just put a little glue on there. And then this one, I want to put where this is staggered just a little bit. So I'm going to come over more towards the middle. In fact, I may line it up on my board here. And this is the middle. And I also want it to make sure that it's the same height. So I'm picking up my pieces and kind of moving it a little bit. That's the nature of having 
a wet glue. You can move things just a little bit. And then this one I'm going to put over on the right. And I want to do it the same type of distance from the edge as this piece. So right about there. And again, I'll test it to make sure that it's the same height. Okay, I like that. I think that looks super cute. All right, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some glue on the edges here to make this a pocket because the bottom is folded. I'm going to do that on each one. All right, let's go back to this piece, which is basically a pocket that I'm putting in my folio piece in the back. I'm just folding up all the edges and I will cut the corner at the bottom at a diagonal. And then here at the top, I'll just kind of cut that snippet off so that it doesn't poke up through the front. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We're going to take this piece and I'm going to line it up where my center is. And I'm going to put a line of glue down the center and I'm going to line it up with the bottom. Wipe away the excess. And I'm only gluing in the center. So this piece right here is not being adhered down. And this is important because your file won't expand if you glue it on the edges and it'll rip. Ask me how I know. <laughs> right, so I'm going to line this back up with the middle again and then just put glue right down the middle. I've got the middle section. All right, so I'm not going to force it because I'm going to hold it at the bottom here, but this should open up where you have a pocket here and then you go to this tab. If I got my finger in there, and there's a pocket there and there's a pocket there. So I'm going to let this dry for just a moment. Let's see how that expands out and you have all these little pockets. Cute, huh? I liked what she came up with. All right, so now I want this piece to adhere down inside my little folio so when it closes up, it's all protected. So I'm going to use these tabs to glue down to the inside. Give that a moment to dry. And while I do, I'll gather some more supplies. Okay, so I've grabbed a few things that I had around my desk that I thought would be kind of cute. So first thing, I've got one of these little paper sacks. And if you don't have a little paper sack, there's tons of tutorials where you can just fold a little piece of paper and make a little sack. And I'm putting some of these labels that I stamped on some ivory and some craft cardstock. I thought that would be kind of cute to have those. And then I've got another one of these little bags and I've got a couple of words like love is here and always dream big. And let's see if I can find a couple more. This one says be the light. I've got a couple of artist trading cards. I just went ahead around the edges and distressed the edges. And I thought these would be cute because you can put them in the back of this pocket. I also have a little coin envelope and I cut some scraps of fabric that I had laying here on my desk down so they would fit. And you can decorate these or what I thought would be kind of neat is you could give this as a gift and whoever you give it to could take the time to decorate the artist trading cards and the little file, um, the little envelopes in here. I got a few more things. These are some of Norella's images. This is a rubber stamped image that I had. It's a label that I made just by cutting off the edges of a rectangle. And what else? I've got a couple of butterflies and some vintage words and postcards and stuff. I had some other things, but I think I'm at a point now. Put this in here, maybe like that. I had a couple of these scraps, so I'm just going to fold a couple of them so they would fit. 
and we'll put those in one of the pockets. So now you have this little ephemera packet that you can put in. It's kind of bulky, a little bit, not too bad, but you could put it in a journal or you could mail it to a friend and say, hey, use these little things to make a little something. So I hope you enjoyed seeing a tutorial on gel printing on book pages and then turning it into an ephemera folio that you can use. In fact, I'm going to make a couple of these to use in a, a project that I'm working on mainly because I'm going to go on vacation and I wanted some small packets of things that I could take with me and play with. All right, everybody, I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, except when I'm on vacation. <laughs> and I have a live stream on the first Thursday of the month where I do gel printing, mixed media, all kinds of fun things and make things out of mixed media elements. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Use that comment box down below. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.